So I want to look at alternative ways of running the engine without actually burning something. Now, I don't know if you're aware of something called the soda train. The soda train was actually a steam engine that run off, ran sorry, off the uh, heat of adding a liquid to certain chemicals. Because if you add liquid to certain chemicals, for instance calcium chloride or sodium hydroxide, they get really, really hot. And using this principle, they actually ran a train. Now, they called it the soda train because it was a bit of marketing. Because everybody was aware of washing soda, which is sodium carbonate, and that's relatively harmless, uh, instead of caustic soda. And they didn't call it the caustic soda train, beware there's five tons of caustic soda rushing by your ear, for obvious reasons. But this reaction of adding water to sodium hydroxide generated enough heat to run trains. And they ran these trains in um, dangerous conditions. So like a, a mine, for instance, where you couldn't have a fire, they would run the soda train. And they were running for quite a while until they sort of, you know, died a death like all steam did in fervour of the internal combustion engine. But that reaction is absolutely fascinating. Now, what we've got here is a Stirling engine. It's just one bought from Amazon. It's a cheap Chinese thing. And it does, in fact, run from the heat of a coffee cup. So I've got a cup of nice hot coffee. Let's pop that on there, and we'll see if we can get it running. Okay, I thought that was actually kind of cool, but what I want to do really, of course, is run it from caustic soda. So we've got a soda stirring engine. Now to do that, what I need to do is turn it upside down. It makes no difference whether it's that way up or that way up. And to hold it upside down, I've got a little cradle. And if I pop that into my little cradle, There we go, we can put a beaker on the top, and now all we need to do is heat that beaker. So that will become the hot end, and that will become the cold end, and to heat that beaker we're going to use this stuff, which is sodium hydroxide. Hence the gloves, incidentally. So we pop that sodium hydroxide in there. And now all we have to do is add some water. We've got some water, we can chuck it in there. And what will happen, obviously, is the sodium hydroxide will begin to dissolve. And as it does so, it'll get hot. I mean, it gets really hot, actually. It'll get hot as boiling. And I don't know if you can see that the steam is actually already beginning to rise on that. And that should create a hot end, cold end for our sterling, so that we can get the sterling running. And there it is. My soda-driven Stirling engine working away. <laughs> that actually is super cool. <laughs> so that actually is awesome. It's it's continuing to turn, and of course it's gonna continue to turn while we maintain that hot end and the cold end. Now, we have used sodium hydroxide in here because it gives a very nice reaction. But it's not the only thing you could use. Calcium chloride will do this as well, and of course that's much more harmless. But the idea here is that we've used the heat of hydration to run an engine. If we take that stuff outside into the sun, of course it's going to evaporate and we're going to get our soda back. And so we get a cycle where we're not actually burning anything in order to provide heat. And that heat can then be used to drive an engine. Now I've done this upside down because I'm thinking that, you know, this is a body of heat on the hot end. But of course, as we all know, heat rises. So this bit here is actually getting quite warm, just like my coffee cup was. So uh, it, I did it this way because it's easy for me to add the water. So the idea here is that this acts as a heat battery and we can use that heat battery to drive an engine and obviously generate from that engine. And the sodium hydroxide can be recharged by lying it out in the sun. That'll dry it and you'll get your heat battery back again. So there's obviously a lot of work to do on this. I mean, that's a, a large amount of heat in there. So it would help if the hot end was actually dipped in there instead of having this interface here and being upside down. But 
a very cool idea, I think. Now, these were used to directly drive steam engines, uh, and they were a closed system, so it is possible to drive a steam engine with this, but a straightforward heat engine like the Stirling engine works just fine. Anyway, thought I'd share that with you. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please remember to like and subscribe.